Hey guys, today we are doing a tutorial on internal combustion engine configurations. What an exciting topic! The idea of an engine configuration is to provide a constant power stroke while keeping the overall size as compact as possible. We will look at different applications later on. Inline engines, or straight engines, have all of the cylinders along the crankshaft without any offset. They are fairly compact and simple. A straight 4 is one of the most common types of car engine. If you mirror the cylinders of an inline engine across the crankshaft to the opposite side, you get a flat engine. They are also very compact. Inline and flat engines can be doubled up to produce a bigger engine. They will have two separate crankshafts which are connected by a gear system into a single output shaft. Two inline engines will make a U engine, and two flat engines connected make an H engine. V engines have the cylinders offset into two planes along the crankshaft. It looks like a V when viewed from the front. Thanks, Captain Obvious. If you add a third row of cylinders, you get a W engine. If you need to go even bigger still, just mirror the V engine across the crankshaft to the opposite side, and you get an X engine. If you add more rows into a big circular shape, you get a radial engine. Radial engines are quite large from the front, but have much more constant power stroke. They were a very common type of engine in World War II aircraft, and even used in tanks. You can add more layers of engines to a radial engine to beef them up quite a bit. These configurations, in theory, can continue to be added up on top of each other, creating some really enormous engines that look like something straight out of Kerbal Space Program. The engine's no good! Get five car engines and put them together! Now we start to get into some of the less conventional engine configurations. Opposed piston engines are this monstrosity of an engine that have two cylinders sharing a single combustion chamber. Ah, oh, this is bad! Of course, there's other ways to mirror this configuration to an even larger and more impractical design. For Wankel rotary engines, the configuration is simply determined by how many rotors there are in the engine. Then there's the abomination of the Duke engine. It's pretty bad. Basically, what someone did is they looked at a revolver and went, I'm gonna make this an engine. And that's how the Duke engine was created. Engine configuration does not affect the power or torque of the engine. Power is determined by the number of cylinders. Which configuration you use depends on the application. Radial engines are too large for cars, but they work great on aircraft because they can be air-cooled. A V6 or inline engine works well in a car because it's compact, and cars have radiators for cooling. These configurations are also used in airplanes, but they can also give the airplane a smaller profile compared to a radial engine. In cars, it really just comes down to how much room you have and how cool you want it to sound. This has been a tutorial on engine configuration. Please like and subscribe for more content, or else I will spill orange juice on your computer. And as always, thanks for watching.